गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुर्व पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम मै सल्यूटेशन टू तिलकम जी एंड टू ऑल द फैमिली मेम्बर्स एंड टू एवरी वन प्रसेंट प्रणाम Ishwaran is eternal. By philosophical view and what he has done from the worldly standpoint too. So, in the matter of spirit, naturally the spirit is eternal. And the matter in the world of matter, the work what you leave behind, how you have lived, that stays eternal because many many people are inspired. I'm very happy that uh, I could be part of this beautiful memorial event of remembering the reminiscence of a person who had lived well. Life is judged by how you live. You live a full life, going through whatever life has to offer. live life in such a way that you don't have the urge to live again that is the way to live go through some of the experiences so complete that it doesn't rise in you to go after it once more so an opportunity which we all have called life every small experience that comes to us let us live them well live it go through it fully so that the urge to repeat doesn't arise ishwaran is one such person lived life fully every experience which came to him he lived he was there totally and a person who could live life so well had the ability to take more those who cannot live well would would uh, struggle if more experiences come to them they will not be able to take the load of experiences life throws a well lived person has this rare ability to accept whatever comes on your way there is a verse in the bhagavad gita chapter 2 which krishna describes a, a ocean he says the wise man is like a ocean the amount of water which flows into the ocean from all the rivers across the globe please think how much of water must be entering the ocean every moment every second how much of water must be gushing into the ocean from all the rivers ocean has the ability to take them it can flood it out it has the ability to take so krishna gives the example of a meditative soul who has lived well a wise person has this ability to take what comes this is one of the qualities i really admired in sri ishwaran in all my interactions when something new comes he would say ha ah, we'll we'll see how we can take it up never was he in a position saying i don't think this is uh, you know like this is too much for me to do he always was okay and ready to accept this ability only shows that he lived well take one experience process it well it gets over done look forward for another new one when we live like this we would be able to take if we are holding on to some of the experiences uh, then there is no space for new such people will live very shallow and not achieve much ishwaran has left a legacy of uh, people who are inspired by him the kind of work he has taken up is definitely for any spiritual seeker 
is an example saying that one can take. So today on this most memorable occasion of a person who has lived life fully well, I would like to quote a Vedic message which talks about someone who has lived life fully. There are five factors which we need to do to live a life fully. If we contribute to these five, follow these five, all of us live life fully well. This is called Pancha Maha Yajna. That's why I said high five. This five would connect us to high. We would feel high in life, spiritually high in life, if we can practice these five. This is called Panchamaha Yajna. The first one is Manushya Yajna. Yajna, a way of life where you offer and serve the human beings. Yajna is a sacred ritual. Service to human beings is a sacred ritual. First Yajna is called Manushya Yajna. The yajna where you serve humanity. There was a monk and uh, he wanted to bring out a book which the content of the book was notes what he took from his guru. From his guru, whatever the guru was teaching, he has taken notes, compiled them, and wanted to bring out a book. It is great admiration to the teacher and to leave the teaching behind for everyone to cherish. The master passed away. The student had this urge, gathered, compiled all the notes, wanted to bring out a book, went around searching for a publisher, found somebody, have to raise funds, went around working hard, raised funds to bring out the book. When everything was done and he was about to publish the book, the village and the town he was living had a severe drought. So severe was the drought that people around needed funds. The money he collected, he spent on the people. Everything is over. The drought went for some time, settled down. The book went unpublished. The man was feeling bad. I could not bring the book, but I raised the money, but there was some other need, it went away. And once again, slowly went back to people. This time they were suspicious, saying, how is he coming back again? Last time we gave him for a book. And he's coming back again. And some hesitatingly, some understood what he was and somehow he raised funds again. It took a couple of years now to gather that back, uh, I mean, after the first collection. And everything was set. He was to release the book, publish the book, and there was floods this time. Severe floods. The money, the funds collected, the monk's heart went to serve the people served. The Guru's book is not yet published. Twice collected, but not published. So you gave a little more time. Once that time got over, another year or so, he went out to the public again saying, I need this book published. You do not know how valuable it is. But second time, the money went on the flood victims. Please help me again. And here, there, People came forward, gave him the funds, and he made the book. The book was released. But what was written on the first page of the book is third edition. You understand? Third edition. When you print a book for the first time, you say first edition. Second edition, third edition. 
first two editions were not seen. Third edition people could see. This is called Manusha Yajna. Service to the people is the service to the Lord of Lords. Devotion to the people is the devotion to the Supreme Self. When we serve people this way, we serve the Self. Manusha Yajna, all of us have this ability. God has given us something. Serve the people around in your little way. Whichever way we can. Whatever we have is our gift by Him. My Guru Swami Chanmayananji used to say, What you have is your gift from Him. What you do with that is your gift unto Him. Please remember, whatever the Lord has given us, He has given us good wishes. He has given us good health. He has given us knowledge. He has given us wealth. He has given a heart full of love. Share it with others. He has blessed us with some talent, which is a gift we have received. Let us give it back. Manusha Yajna. Serve the humans, the people around. Manusha Yajna. This is one way. This is also called a rini. If I live here without giving back, I live a waste life. Please remember how much all of us would have received in this life with the people around. How much we must have received. I would just like you to think a small example which we do every day. Tomorrow or tonight when you have your dinner, take a spoonful of food in your hand, watch it and try to trace its journey. Handful of meal which comes to us, please trace its journey. Trace it. Where does it start? Where did the food come from? Oh, it came from the refrigerator. How did it arrive in the refrigerator from the market? From the market, how did it come to the market? Trace it back. And every other thing involved in making that food to the taste which you want to eat, the spices added to it, the heat, the cool, whatever methods required, how many industries are involved in bringing that handful of food to us right from sowing the seeds. Please think. The preparation we need to do to sow the seeds. After sowing the seeds, the crop comes the way in which we need to take care of it. Do you understand? A population was involved in bringing that handful of meal to us, a handful of food to us. Let us give back. The joy of human life is giving more than what we take. Manusha Yajna. Let's give more than what we take because we have received from the world so much. Let's give. What should I give? What you are blessed with. Whatever is the talent we are blessed with, let us give. Manusha Yajna. First. The second Yajna, the second ritual is Pitru Yajna. Please remember some of the most beautiful practices which we do today reached to us through our family. It did not come to us through the universities. It did not come to us through different organizations. Most of it has come to us through our family. Thank you. Small festivals like Ganesh Chaturthi, Diwali. How did this knowledge reach you? Or even celebrating a full moon. How did this knowledge reach you? Through your ancestors, isn't it? Pitrus. 
Your great, 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 great grandfather practiced it. He gave it to the next generation, the next, and the next, and the next. Your great, great, great grandmother practiced it. She passed it over to the next, to the next, to the next, and it has reached you. How beautiful ancestral way of life. Certain values have reached us. Our debt, the yajna is, we sustain it and reach it to the next generation. The most beautiful cultural way of life, which has come to us, we should inspire the next generation to keep it alive. Then we do Pitru Yajna, ancestral knowledge, ancestral way of life, ancestral customs, ancestral rituals, which has flown down for how many thousand years? Please remember, we have a very long ancient history recorded which runs into a few thousand decades. Think how it was handed over one by one, one generation after another, it has reached us. You should not be a full stop. You should not be the chain that breaks. You should be the chain that links. With how much this journey has traveled and reached you, make sure you hand it over to the next generation. That is called Pitru Yajna.